think on Sunday or Saturday, it's been two weeks. So two, three more days. The cat wants to go outside. Alrighty YouTube, I just thought it was very fascinating that some of these fry make it through here and that he will actually fetch them and put them in this rock. I thought that was very fascinating. That's awesome parenting skills. Because there is a divider. It is a see-through divider so they do see each other. Sort of, you know, the best they can because it is distorted, I guess, when they see each other. <laughs> but they can see each other, so that's cool. Oh, they see each other pretty dang well. Okay, never mind. It's just the way you look at it. Okay, okay. That's good. But, um, yeah. If you have a tank, and you have a lot of fish in it, and you have a pair that you do want to actually try to breed, but you do not have anywhere to put them, or you've just been having bad luck re relocating the fry. And, um, I heard that remove all the fish in the main aquarium and just leave the fry in the main aquarium because then they won't have any you know water changes or any difference in water when they go to a different tank or anything you just remove the big fish but I don't have a tank to hold all these fish so a divider is a good idea maybe <laughs> not 100% sure you know we're still going but um you know it's definitely something you would think about if you're trying to breed some fish and you have nowhere to really put them and you have very low success when you try to remove the fry um, yeah, put a divider in the tank see what happens but when you're trying to breed electric blue acardus they say the best method from what I learned now because I tried this is my fourth time so the other three did not work first time I removed the fry when they were extremely small like maybe two days just hatched you know they've been only hatched for two days still got the egg yolk put them into a breeder tank which was established and everything and I even emptied the breeder tank and used this water and moved them over which they actually lived for maybe a day or two you know they did live for a couple days but one day I came home and it was a graveyard I'm like wow second time I waited till they started to be like this so about a good week and they started swimming around a little bit and I removed half of them and I only removed half of the water from the breeder tank and then I siphoned half of these guys out with you know making it full again with this water but like I said on the second time I didn't actually empty the breeder tank only took half the water out and surprisingly they died within minutes like they went in there and you know 30 minutes later they were dead so that was too big of a drastic change in water parameters I would imagine so the first time worked because I actually used a hundred percent of this water second time did not work at all because I only used 50 percent of this water and the water was in the breeder tank which was way too big of a parameter change I guess but regardless if they're gonna in my idea, if they're gonna die that fast, just with using 50 you know, 50% empty on the breeder tank and refilling the other 50% with this water, and they're gonna have such sensitivity to that, then um, I think I'm just not gonna have a good success rate unless I get two matching tanks with the same substrate, same idea, you know, wood, a little bit of rock there and there, to hopefully have the same parameters. But since we have two tanks two tanks are going to have two different parameters you know unless you really match it pound to pound rock and wood and all this good stuff because there's wood in here there's rock in here two different types of soil technically three um yeah so everybody says or oh wait so my third try was i did nothing i just left them alone in about two weeks about 14 15 days they were all gone they just got eaten. They were like this, but with at the night, 
half of the pack was and then the next time next night all gone so somebody told me oh it's not that hard to breed a car so all you gotta do is remove the parents from the tank and leave the fry in the main tank I'm like, okay, what if you have a community tank? They said, do the same thing, just remove all the fish, put them in a different tank. You're gonna have a very high success rate if you leave them in the main tank. I'm like, okay. Well, like I said, I don't have anywhere to put them. So, divider it is. <laughs> Hell yeah. And, um, it's been, you know, it's been almost two weeks. You know, it's two, three days away from it. So, that's how far they got last time before they really got eaten so I'm thinking you know maybe tomorrow I might even remove her and put her over there because eventually their job is done protecting the fry you know what I mean their job will be done eventually in my idea and you know they are so much bigger than these fish even if they grow like here you know like little baby or cardas <laughs> instead of being fry now I don't know like children now little tiny bitty fish they would still be able to eat them so I'm not for sure yet but I'm gonna see what happens because I did hear some people say oh the mom is just fine with them she will never eat them you know she can grow up with or like the fry can grow up with her like it will be okay so I'm just gonna you know observe and see see how it is tomorrow and uh, if I see a huge difference in fry population then she will definitely be put into the other half but as of right now, they are still definitely following her, no matter where she is in the area, they will definitely follow her. So that's really neat to observe too. They imagine they had the whole tank and they, you know, she would go like this, and all the fry would come along too. That'd be crazy. But um, yeah, we couldn't have that because there's just too many fish. There's three fish that will definitely eat all the fry. The Taiwan Reef cichlids are very fast, they'll be like, Yum! And then the um, dinosaurs, big grip, will, you know, they're opportunist feeders, so definitely, you know, he will ambush it if he sees it. You know, if it comes right in front of his face, he's like, clack, you know, he's gonna eat it. And especially at night, he's gonna go all out at night. So, um, yeah, we definitely don't want that, right? <laughs> But alright you two, I wish you an awesome night, and y'all be good, laters.